Alright folks, this is uh, today Postal Brain Damage. Uh, who knew that uh, one of the worst video game uh, of all time could spawn spin-offs within this franchise? That's exactly what we have here. Uh, much like I guess Postal 3, haha, <laughs> this uh, game was uh, produced with the involvement of Running With Scissors but not developed by them. Um, and I gotta say, unlike Postal 3, this is a pretty cool game. Um, it really does follow the trend of uh, a lot of the quote-unquote boomer shooters that are being made today, paying homage and inspiration from uh, the great memories of games of yesteryear. Um, you can tell the retro art style and what have you. Um, just from the title sequence, it's a little bit risque, just like the Postal series uh, is known for. But, uh, I mean, if you're over the age of 13, uh, you can get over it. So I've been playing this game a bit. I'll just jump into where I am now in the story. Um, uh, so you run around and shoot things. It's got a pretty sizable. Um, what's the key? Yeah, pretty sizable selection of weapons and items you can use. Uh, in video games, shooter games, I very rarely use the. Uh, the uh, what do you call them? The items, other than healing items, because um, I just find it detracts from the immediacy of the shooting. Um, very rarely, I think, does a game get item systems well. Um, a lot here. Let me point this out since it's happening. Like the postal games before, uh, there's a lot of NPCs that don't fire on you. They're just there passively, um, which you can farm for health. Uh, whilst releasing your inner psychopath, so to speak. Um, I don't really think you have to be psycho to shoot them. There's a lot of, uh, what's it called, cool gibbiness to it. Um, and it's adjusted within the aesthetic of, of a shooter. It's satisfying and it's a lot more fun than simply picking up a health pack, which is right there as well. Um, so there is a kind of uh, strategy with each different enemy type that you'll be into. This is like a heavy thing that runs at you. Um, so you want to try to run from them, not let them hit you. This is the holy hand grenade. I just kind of wasted it. I, I hate those kind of weapons in these games, by the way, where you have to kind of strategize ammo. I end up min-maxing, never using them until the boss fights. Um, shotgun is cool because it also has a grappler hook, which really adds to the, uh, what do you call it, the sense of motion. Uh, not much verticality, I would say. Um, this isn't like a double jump game, uh, nor is it a hover, hover pack game. Very few games, in fact, are hover pack games, which is something that I kind of feel sad about. I love eight degree, uh, no, six degrees of freedom games. <laughs> Look at me adding an extra two degrees. Uh, those are fun, but I guess hard to design for both in the AI as well as just the the gameplay itself. So most shooters tend to play it safe, keep the verticality to a minimum. Um, I guess this game is none for the worst. There are elements where there's a lot of verticality, like industrial settings where you use uh, ramps and what have you to traverse heights. Uh, so this is like an invitation. They want you right now to use the explosive. Did I ever tell you I don't think, yeah, there's no reload system in here. I'm pressing R, this is a quick switch. Um, I think this is like a Walmart parody. This, this, the great thing about this game is the level design um, is not static. Every mission is unique. And I gotta say, the first mission, I think, is always sticking to my mind. It reminds you of Psychonauts. It's kind of like a, uh, a very surreal uh, suburban setting. Very colorful. I like the colorful games. Um, the peeing in this game, unlike the previous games, is not really so much meant to be, like, fun. It's mostly used to activate, uh, these stupid gear mechanisms. Secrets. Aha. Uh -huh. I like how the game doesn't, like, require you to hunt down secrets for upgrades, but simply rewards you with the, the fun of it in itself, which I think it should be. I always get frustrated with games basically pivot you into a situation where you feel like you're missing out of basic gameplay for not doing the secrets. Um, uh, 
Huh, so this is... It's kind of grown worthy. Some of the comedy in here. Uh, a cool thing too, I talked about verticality. Yeah, it is a little bit minimal, but uh, there's a cool slide mechanic which increases your speed. Um, it is a, a very welcome uh, mechanic. Um, so I gotta find her first. I think this is like a spawning enemy where these these sub elements are gonna keep spawning indefinitely until I kill the boss. So I'm gonna ignore them. Um, I th or I'll use the holy hand grenade and take them all out at once. Um, so this is like uh, it's hard to to say um, talk and chew your gum at the same time. But each of these weapons is unique. Uh, this is more like a, a nail gun with a time stop mechanic. Uh, this is the grenade launcher. This is cool because it's like a kind of like a pulse gun, but it also uh, fires a grenade projectile, which damages everything in its path. Very good for crowd control. Um, chain gun. It's really nothing uh, advanced or fancy. Um, Oh, this is a lock-on mechanic. It's a trace. It fires a tracer around, which I think is stupid. Because why would you need to blind fire? I guess it's a lot. Maybe you're not uh, trying to focus on movement and not so much uh, the aiming at the moment, like right now. But it's still kind of. Eh. This is an adult gun. I don't want to make anyone feel weird, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, it's a crossbow, essentially. And also featured in Postal 4. This is a... it's got a block mechanic. Um, this is like a chainsaw. Those enemies that I... let me use that quick help, F key. Those... some of these will explode on con, uh, contact. That's the Mexican jumping bean, I guess, so to speak. Uh, I'm trying to lock on with the... Uh, Oh no, I don't want to come here. I don't think that they can absorb projectiles until the time time thing goes out, yeah. Um, I'll just... I, I don't want to let anyone miss out too much of the environment uh, variety. So thankfully, there is a survival mode where you can play back some of the missions you've beaten. Uh, it, it does this is a good focus on replayability here. You have uh, leaderboards to just score best weapon. Challenge your friends. Um, I think yeah. Here I can replay the old missions. Um, I'll go into that suburbia one because that was fun. I talked about before. I play my games on hard boys. The story is very minimal here. It's just uh, it's just to kind of chain the missions together. Uh, Suburban Commando, I think, was a movie with uh, Hulk Hogan, if I'm not mistaken. So here, this is the fun part about this is the most similar uh, to the other Postal games that you're going to get in this game. It's basically a kind of neutral environment with lots of just uh, fodder ripe for the picking. Just kick and punch. Um, uh, oh yeah, if you're if you hold the the right mouse button while you're not holding anything, you fart. Um, it's pretty cool. I don't think there's a fart gun. Um, secrets. Uh, I like that they picked uh, that postal dude from Postal Three to voice this because uh, he his voice is pretty hardcore. I must say so. Um, so Props to that. I don't. I like the Postal Two guy too, but the Postal Three guy is growing on me simply because he is like the only, I think, worthwhile part of Postal Three. And so, like, just to salvage my sanity, like, he's in my head. You know, it's Postal Three. I beat it the other day. I know I had trouble with it, with, uh, showing all you guys, but I did, it. and I'm glad because now I don't ever have to play it again. But yeah, this is Postal Brain Damage. It's good for a few hours of fun, um, like all these other boomer shooter uh, inspired games that are coming out. 
you get bored about from them. Uh, thankfully, I gotta say this doesn't hasn't outstayed its welcome yet. Um, you know, it's endearing in its own way, um, and it's definitely a solid postal game. So I'll recommend this to you. Uh, peace out.